Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about your own magic collection and whether or not you should treat it as a business. I'm talking about this because I went to a local store I normally don't go to in uh, Houston and everyone had these like suitcases and I was like, oh, maybe they're traveling for work or whatever. But in these suitcases, these are like actual suitcases or uh, they are the suitcases I use to travel with that you put your laptop in. You put your MacBook in, you put your iPad in, and you put like a set of clothing for like a day or two. They have magic cards in them. And a lot of people are treating Magic the Gathering as a business. Uh, one, speculators, two, MTG finance people, and there's a difference, and then just traders, like collectors. So I'm going to go over each of these type of people and like what what is what their effect or what I believe their effect on the market would be. Speculators, we can all say, you know, that they are not great for the community. Um, they drive up a price. Actually, there was a very good article I read about a commander, uh, EDH commander, who they drove up the price to three times and they only made like, or two or three times, and they only made a quarter card, like a quarter at buy list, a card, and then they made a little bit of money, but it wasn't that good, but then he drove up the price by three times or two times. And that is your typical speculator. So MTG Finance, I think, is a little different from speculation. It's more of instead of driving up the price of one card, you want to drive up the price of your collection. So instead of speculating on one card, you want to have multiple speculations. And this has the aggregate effect of exactly what the first case was. Now, the, second, the last type of player who, brings, who would bring a suitcase, I imagine, is the one who just wants to show off his or her collection. And this type of play I don't get because it just has a lot of danger to it. If I'm gonna bring all these cards, I'm not gonna trade for it. And later this week, I'm gonna show you my new binder. And the reason that my new binder is so nice is because I never bring it anywhere. I just keep it in my home and that's it. So I don't get that type of play either because if your collection is so valuable to you, why are you bringing it and showing everyone, showing strangers who are now kind of like, oh wow, you have playsets of every dual land, it's in that binder, maybe I should take that backpack. It's just not a smart kind of scenario to have, especially if you do value your collection. I collect because I like collecting. I don't collect to uh, really um, show it off in any way. I don't feel like, I don't believe you've ever seen my Magic Online Trading League collection. Uh, when I was still doing that, I still have a lot, that's, a lot of that is in storage still, and I never, I kept it very separated from this channel, because obviously when someone buys a card, and I trade it away, or something happened to a card, or I traded FNM, then like, I gotta buy it at a higher price to sell, to give to that player, and I'm not gonna do that, because that's a waste of money and time. So, anyway, Let's talk a little bit about Magic the Gathering as a business. Um, every trade binder, every transaction you make, uh, I was trading a lot at the pre-release and I was trading a lot at the first week and I don't feel like I'm gonna trade that much anymore because I have the cards I need. You, every trade, every time that you go to FNM, it's a financial transaction, right? And then what you're actually giving up is something called cost of opportunity. So instead of going, so if you go to Friday Night Magic and you start trading and you get some value and let's say you make $20 in trade value, which is $10 optima, at most $10 in buy list value, but it took you four hours to trade or let's say two hours to trade, you're making $5 an hour, which is in most places uh, lower than minimal wage. So you got to ask yourself, is it worth it to make these financial transactions? Now, no one wants to lose money playing Magic Gathering. I'm not suggesting people do that, but what happens is Magic is such an expensive game. Um, again, I'm gonna have another video up about how much money I spent on Magic Origins. And originally I was only gonna spend like a quarter of that amount maybe, but I ended up spending way too much on it. So whenever you make a financial decision, be it a trade, be it playing at f &M, always factor in cost of opportunity. And I do this at like $10, $15 an hour. Uh, that would be $10 an hour is what the people get paid at Walmart at my local Houston. And so instead of spending five, six, 10 hours at f and 
maybe you would be making a hundred dollars at Walmart if you were to work. Now you might say, oh, that's enjoyment, that's entertainment, and you're absolutely right. If you view magic as entertainment and you enjoy trading, then yes, that's not a fair comparison. But if you view magic as a business, as I'm gonna bring my suitcase of magic cards, then that is a fair comparison. Not only are these people driving up prices, they are also um, making it more difficult to get these cards for ordinary players. But here's the catch 22, and I'm gonna end the video with this. If you don't play this game, you're gonna get screwed. So if you don't play this MTG Finance game, you are going to spend a lot more money on it. If you don't play this, oh, I need to trade for this card, I need to trade for that card, you're going to eventually be screwed. And, um, or if you don't care pr the card prices when you start trading, you're going to get ripped off because there's a lot of people who do not have any qualms trading and being pretty much deuce bags about trading. And yeah, I'll, I think I shared a story about um, me training two Nisars into a foil Narset and that foil Narset was at $80, $90 and I traded that foil Narset the week it came out for a Snapcaster which was only $50 and a Ugin and I think a Flooded Strand. I think that was the trade. It might have been just Snapcaster and Ugin but I don't know. Um, and I felt bad about that trade, so to make amends for that trade, I just traded two Nisas for it. Although a Nisa can evenly trade into a foil Narset. Um, but the other Nisa I didn't even need. I don't like green as a color. So yeah, why not? Um, but you're not always going to run into people who are going to think this way. They, they might think, oh, that trade's done, that's concluded. I got a really good value in that trade, too bad for you. Um, but that's not the way I think about trading. So long story short, if you don't do MTG Finance, you don't make smart trades, you don't, you're gonna spend a lot of mo money buying cards that you may or may not need and then they're gonna sit in a binder and that's the end of that. And you can spend a lot of money in Magic the Gathering this way. Like so a tremendous amount of money doing that. Is it wise? I don't believe so. So it's a catch 22 if you don't do MTG Finance, you're going to be the sucker who's going to pay for more cards or who's going to buy these cards at inflated prices. If you do it, then everything else goes up. All the prices go up and you are a participant in that drive to increase prices. So yeah, I wish there was a better solution. Maybe um, there is. I'll leave a comment below if you feel, if you agree, you disagree, you, have, you can offer a solution. And yeah, bye guys.